This is Business with Dave. In this video, I'll be helping you grow your market store business and hopefully you can take some of these tips and advice and apply it to your market store business. So hopefully it can grow from one to two or maybe into a shop or maybe an online store. Who knows? Let's see how it goes. So hopefully you will enjoy this video. So yeah, let's jump straight into this video. So my first tip is to save about 10 to 20% of all your savings from your trading days and keep that as reserves. Keep that as investment money or backup money. This is where hopefully you don't turn it into your wages and spend it all on lavish stuff. This is where you keep 10, 20% in order for future projects or maybe future developments. Stuff that you can improve your store by, maybe buy new equipment, buy new display stuff new bottling stuff, new packaging, who knows? This is where you think outside the box and literally you are saving maybe for a rainy day. Literally when you're expanding a business or you're expanding into a new product line and stuff like that, you're gonna need capital and you don't wanna be taking it from your savings. You wanna be reinvesting the money from your market store business currently. And with that, if you could save 10, 20%, it doesn't have to be 20%, even 10%, it will accumulate and as you accumulate more money you'll be able to reinvest into your business and hopefully that will bring more money to your business and then hopefully you'll be collecting more reserve money and reinvesting this is where you the whole process of reinvesting your money will hopefully get you more money at the end of it so do consider having a pot or having a reserve money or even having a jar if you're collecting cash just plunk in five pounds 10 pounds, 15 pounds, here or there, and making sure every time that you do put in money into the jar. Because if you stop one week and stop, start another week and just keep doing that, you won't be collecting much for a rainy day, so do consider that. So the next tip is to introduce new products or similar products to your original products that you've already sold. So this could be a different type of drink or a different style of like clothing or like different color schemes and different themes. This could be literally you expanding your product range and you introducing new products to your customers. Hopefully you have your core offerings, your classic, your traditional, your first thing that has really put you on a map. But obviously people like variations. If they like a particular business, they would carry on supporting your business if you have newer products. So you growing your product range is you telling your customers, hey guys, we still have more stuff coming in the pipeline so hopefully you will enjoy it and hopefully you'll buy from us again and that's the repeat customers guys that's a repeat so it doesn't have to be they have to continuously buy this one product they could be buying different types of colors different types of styles and you'll be expanding your sales and your product range as you go along so the third tip is all about reducing your waste in order to increase your profits in the long run so in terms of growth you don't want to be wasting anything. You don't want to be counting your costs down to in the bins and stuff like that. You want to make sure it's utilized. You want to make sure every penny that you put in is turning into a pound. So literally, you want to be making sure that if you have any waste, you reduce it as much as you can because ultimately your bottom line won't be as high and that your margins will be higher than that. That's the aim. If you have excess stuff, that's never good. You want to make sure you can utilize it and particularly if you're doing street food as well, if you could literally, whatever stuff you don't sell on the day and it's good for the next day, then you're not chucking away good food, you're literally selling it the next day. That's the whole part of reducing waste. You're not creating waste and you're throwing money away, you're reducing it and you're increasing the profit and hopefully that grows your business as your profits grow as well. The next point is can you sell in multiple locations so if you're doing if you already have one market store really solid in one market can this be replicated into different markets as well this could literally be you hiring someone or one of your friends a family member manning one as well but you introducing products that is hopefully if there's products that you could create and make at home and sell at multiple locations is that feasible for you? Is it profitable for you? Is it best if you just have one solid location so people can go to you? Or is it good that you could have one in North, East, South and West? And who knows, Who the different possibilities are endless. But do consider if you do want to grow your market store business, like take advantage of the low rent 
and high traffic in different locations as well and potential people buying at different times and different seasonal things you can literally make a lot of money banking on lots of different locations but obviously you want to do your research you want to make sure your clientele is there there is a not already a product already selling what you're selling and you're offering something different so do consider these different options but if you have a solid things like if you're selling knits to scarves and stuff like that these could be in multiple locations it could be during winter time and during peak season and you'll be making the killing then uh, but definitely consider multiple locations if you can manage the multiple like the effort and work as well because if you do one market store doing a second one is double the amount of work but obviously it will be eased once you get used to it but it will be double the amount of work so do consider those options so the fifth point is can you potentially sell online so this is where you reach out beyond your location and maybe country or city and you're reaching to a bit more further customers that will demand who want, want to buy your products can this be a potential way to increase your sales and grow your business on the online present way if it's a yes then do figure out the packaging how's it going to be transported the different carriers will it be packaged a certain way and see how it goes you are literally if you're creating a product then you're developing a product that hopefully you can sell it to as many people but selling online opens the door to so many different options so many different customers if you utilize social media so many different possibilities out there so do consider it doesn't have to be a fixed location a market store you could be selling literally selling online sending it through post and generating that income as well and as growing as you are going the next option is a bit more expensive option and it really depends on where you are it's to set up shop so this is literally if your concept is really successful and you see high demand does it have to be in a fixed location where obviously you don't need to be sheltered by the rain and be put off by setting up a store is it beneficial if you just set up one store and people will know where to get your products from and that it will be easier for you to set up base literally you can manage your market store have a shop and maybe have an online store as well definitely different ways to grow your business it doesn't have to be in a shop as well but having a, maybe a HQ, having a place where you create your products and have everything located in one location could be super efficient, cost effective and just shows that your business is really up and coming and really out there and creating product that people will buy. So do consider setting up a shop. Yes, it's more expensive. Yes, you have to pay this and this and this. But draw in the benefits, draw in the possibilities as well how much of a risk is it do you have enough savings hopefully you have enough savings from the first tip in your, your pop jar of savings that you can reinvest but ultimately it will be costly but the exposure will be literally real real and it's not just a market store project literally this is a solid business and do consider set up a shop if you do want to expand your operations beyond just a market store my seventh tip and literally from the first tip the pot of money that you have literally reinvest that into better operations improving your finances taking it, making sure your expenses are in check this is an accountants and stuff like that this is all very important in order to make sure you have a successful business that is making money and not losing money because a lot of people focus too much on making sales but they're not looking at well where's this tax coming in and this thing's gonna suck a lot of money out of my business and I'm not gonna be making any money at the end of it do consider the numbers because that's so important even if you're just doing one market store managing the numbers will be so important in order to make sure that you are making a profit at the end of it and that you're just not doing it just to break even but ultimately when you're starting up a business you want to grow it and as you grow and you extend to maybe online business or a shop business, your expenses, your overheads, your costs will be the biggest headaches that you will be getting. But if you could have that in control, if you have that in check, you won't need to be worried about it because you know what will be coming in, what will be coming out. Yes, it will take a lot more time, a lot of effort on your part, but if you could pay someone to do it, so an accountant, to in order to sort out your bookkeeping and stuff like that, that already will 
lay off 30% of the work on your load where you can focus 100% on the actual business itself and the customer side. Let the accountant do all that business, the numbers and stuff, and you just focus on the customer side and making sure your business carry on growing. Because ultimately, you can't do everything yourself. You could do dabbles, everything, of when you start up a market store business, but you can't grow a business by yourself. You, you're gonna need extra help. And if it's not from a friend or a family member, maybe they could recommend you someone as well. They could give you a helping hand and maybe free labor, volunteers, stuff like that, stuff to consider. But in order to grow, you are gonna need that team. You're gonna need a foundation. You're gonna need people to help you cover a base in order to help you. So do consider the different options with getting people in and reinvesting that money into people that know what they're doing so you can focus on the main business side or the main fun side that you do actually enjoy instead of all the paperwork. And my last point is that yes, you can get outside investment. Yes, you can get maybe someone giving you a pot of money and they believe in your idea. But ultimately, I've never done that before and I feel like a lot of people have. But for me, if I could use my own money, it means a lot more to me and I would put, put in a lot more time and effort into the effort and money I put in, then I'm more motivated, I'm more focused, I have more goal oriented in terms of what I need to do in order to get to where I am. And you sort of feel more pressured into doing it because it's your own money. So this is where you reinvest all your money into your business or you take that plunge and put it into a new business and you see how it works. Hopefully you can take a lot of learning, a lot of learning lessons from it and then you can take it on your next project. But ultimately, if you can reinvest it into your own projects and not have someone else hang over their judgment or their views over you, then that might be better for you in the long run. I, I don't personally know because I've just had my own money and I've reinvested and I've invested into my projects and I don't feel the pressure of needing to repay someone else but I could definitely see the benefits of it because obviously they give you capital you spend the capital but you might not feel as motivated because it's not your own money it's not come literally coming out of your own pocket but for me when it comes out of my own pocket I feel the added pressure you feel the added focus you're more motivated in order to make sure you can turn that 10 pounds into 20 pounds than if you can be turning that 10 pounds of someone else into 15 pounds and they take 11 pounds and you're left with something stubbing them out. God knows, I have no idea. But literally, I feel like if you could reinvest your own money, you have more control. And I think that's the thing I find more happy is that I have control over my business. I decide, I make the decisions. I If it fails, if it fails, it fails. If it works, it works. If there's stuff that I can improve, it can improve. If there's stuff that I don't like, then I just want to get rid of it and then get rid of it. This is all down to control and I feel like I'm most happy in control of my situation, my business. And if I can't control, then it, it makes me feel anxious and stuff like that. But having, being able to invest your own money, you have that own pressure on yourself. So you just compete with yourself really and you decide how you want to take it forward. But if you have someone else, they might loom over you, they might demand payments of this and this and this, and you might not be making the money in the beginning anyways, you might need time. You need to learn those lessons as well. There'll be key times where you'll be losing money because you made a mistake and you have to pay more money in order to fix the mistakes. And this is learning lessons. Sometimes people don't give you enough time. And I think that's so important for everyone's development. You need time, you need to be able to make mistakes, you need to be able to not feel pressured into well, you failed now, we're just gonna take this rug off your feet. You have time, you do what you have to do, and hopefully you'll be happy with the end result because you are the one who is committed to that end result. And that ultimately you have no regrets and that people, they don't lose their money, you invest your own money and hopefully whatever you make from it, you take more pride from it because ultimately it's out of your own pocket instead of from someone else's. So do consider the different options, but obviously when you grow, you might need external external help. So do 
planet see the different repayments because as soon as you can repay them back then this business is all yours and this is literally you've used that money to grow your business and this business is making you more money then that's a win-win situation because you paid these guys back and you've built a bigger business that is making more money and hopefully you're happy with that but yeah Thanks for watching this video guys, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, like this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you everyone for who has already subscribed to the channel. You guys are awesome. And thanks for liking the videos as well because I do make these videos for you to hopefully help inspire you and get you moving and towards doing your market store business or whatever business you're doing. So yeah, I'm in business with Dave. I'll see you next video. Take care.